So <laughs> I I used to think I was good with money and then I started watching your channel <laughs> and realized I'm not good with money. Hey guys. Hey. Welcome to another episode of the How Much Do They Make series. Today, we're super excited to have this guest on. Today, we have Lexi. Lexi, welcome. Hi. Hi. Thank hey, you Lexi. for having me. Hey. So would you like to just introduce yourself, you know, tell everyone who you are and what you do? Yep. So um, my name's Lexi. I'm from Scotland. I've lived most of my life in Scotland with a brief period in Fiji. Um, my mum's from Scotland, my dad's from Fiji, so that's why we were over in Fiji. Um, I was raised by a single parent, and I am now a maths teacher. Wow. Awesome. So I'm really excited speaking to you, actually, because um, maths is, you know, to become a maths teacher is no easy kind of path to kind of get there. So I'm just curious, how did you, do you want to just tell us how you got into becoming a maths teacher? Um, okay. Did you actually do a degree or? do a maths A level, that sort of stuff. Do you want to just walk us through how you actually got to where you are? Yeah, so um, when I was at school, I was one of those annoying, good all-rounders, like <laughs> good at everything people. Um, and I didn't, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do um, when I left school. But my mum is very, I don't know what the word is, like driven. So she was like, you're going to uni. I don't care what you do, but you're going to uni. <laughs> so I had to choose something and I, I really enjoyed maths. So I decided to do a degree in maths. I actually started off, I think it was a joint degree in maths biology, maths bio. Oh. But I dropped the biology bit um, later on yeah. and I got to my third year. So in Scotland, we do four years. So I got to my third year and started thinking, I'm going to need to get a job. <laughs> so I started looking into what I wanted to do because I still didn't know what I wanted to do at that point and um, so I was looking into like really random things so for a while I got really into scuba diving so I really oh. was um, fully considering a career in diving I was looking into commercial diving I went for the open day at Fort William and um, where the diving school is for commercial divers hmm. and the thing that like put me off is I think you had to pay like £20,000 to get trained up as a commercial diver. And coming from a like a single parent family, we didn't have money like that sitting around. You could take out a careers loan, but I don't think it covered it all or something. So I looked into the police because the police have a dive unit. Um, but I found out that the dive unit in Scotland, it's only got like five divers in it. So right. the chances of me getting into that dive unit eventually were very slim. Um, so I looked into doing a master's in statistics, um, but again, it came down to money because in Scotland, we don't have to pay for our um, first degree. Yeah. So um, if I had wanted to do a master's, I would have had to pay for it. So that sort of put me off. Um, so I looked into teaching. In my third and fourth year, I did some placements in schools just to see if, I, if, if it was for me sort of thing. And I decided it was. So yeah. I knew that it... I, I would enjoy it um, what, if I went into that. So I did a postgraduate diploma in education. I think that's the title. Mm -hmm. I think it's a postgraduate certificate if you're in England, I think. Right. Um, but I did that. And that's actually funded by the Scottish government as well. I don't know why, um, but they funded that year as well. Mm. And now I'm a maths teacher. <laughs> <laughs> So you've been a maths teacher, sorry if I missed it, how many oh, years? Oh, sorry, um, four years. Four, four years. years, yeah. And what age group do you teach? Um, so in Scotland, our primary school is primary one to seven, and they go into secondary school when they're about 12, 12, 13. So 12, 13-year-olds up until 17, 18-year-olds. Okay. Nice. So tell us, what does a day in the life of a maths teacher typically look like for you? I usually go in about eight um, to prepare for classes, check my emails. Then I will have my timetable, so I will teach my classes. You do get non-contact time, and that's okay. for getting on with other things like class preparation and stuff like that. Uh -huh. um, so I will teach through my day, and then the school day ends like just right, round about four, okay. just before four. Um, but a lot of people stay on, so I think your contracted hours are just the school day hours, um, uh -huh. but in order to get everything done you do need to work longer than that so it depends how you want to manage your time I usually like I said I go in at eight and I sometimes stay until about six mm -hmm. other people leave when school ends and 
like if they've got families, they'll go and pick up the children, blah, 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 blah. And then they'll do some work in the evening later on. Um, other people work at the weekends. I also work at the weekends. I usually wow. set aside Saturday mornings um, just because I like to I like to be really, really prepared. So I like to know what I'm doing for the entirety of the next week. Um, like some people will just plan a day in advance, but I like to have a week's worth planning in place. So I usually set aside Saturday mornings for that. When you're at school, like yourself, you just see the teachers. You just see the teachers teaching you. Yeah. You don't see like all the behind the scenes well, stuff. So there yeah. is a lot of admin work, like typing up information, passing it on to people. But you've also got like reporting back to parents and stuff like that. So there is a lot of other things that you wouldn't necessarily think of thinking back to your experience at school. Yeah. <laughs> this point you talk about in terms of working hours. So people might hear that and go, well, actually, you work all these extra hours, but then you get a, a longer summer break. Oh, I, I think you do. This is what the, the impression I get from when I hear about teachers, they get a much longer break for the summer and stuff like that. In your experience, does that is that is that extra work you're doing compensated adequately by the fact that you get a longer summer break? I don't know. It depends on the situation. Like with um, the current pandemic, we have been like on our knees at times. Wow. With just the extra stress that that has caused. Um, I do know we are like really, really lucky to have the holidays we have because I think uh, it might be different in England, but I'm assuming it's about the same. We get 12 weeks of holidays Mm -hmm. um, like across the year. So I know we're like, that's way more than loads of other professions. Um, But I'm not sure, like our technical contracted hours are 35 hours a week. um, But I don't think I know anybody who who only works 35 hours a week. What do you think you're doing realistically per 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 week, if you had to average your real weekly hours, what do you think you're doing per week? I honestly, I I don't know just now, but I know when I first started, yeah. I would be in at eight and I would finish either six or seven every day. And then I would work, like I said, probably half a day at the weekend as well. Mm. Um, wow, so you could easily over a week be off averaging 12 hour days, basically by the, by the sounds of it. Yeah, yeah, it does. I mean, they say it gets easier as you progress um I, it definitely is getting easier because you build up like your own bank of resources you get more into the swing of things you get to know the courses better so you like you know exactly what you're doing with them and um, so it's definitely really like really hard work at the beginning um but you do it does get easier over time what would you say what top three things would you say have made you a success at what you do as a maths teacher could be habits as well Okay, um, work ethic. Um, you definitely have to have a really good work ethic. Um, it is, like I mentioned, it is it's tough. It's hard work. Um, patience. You definitely need to be patient because you're dealing with, well, as a, like a secondary teacher, you're dealing with like class fills of hormones, basically. Um, yeah. So you definitely need patience. Um, and probably like, the, the drive to serve others so teaching okay. it's not a job like for me about me it's about like your pupils yeah. um so yeah the drive to serve others probably love that that makes you an excellent math teacher <laughs> tell us what are the challenging aspects of what you do um for i think there's probably two for me the behavior management um it probably depends like school to school, you'll have different challenges in your job depending on your school and your catchment area. But for me, behaviour management is mm. quite tough. But um, another one, and this will be like universal around all schools, it's not being able to make the right choices for the pupils. So as a teacher, you can see their like their potential and you can see that they would be able to achieve whatever they want. But because they don't want it themselves Mm. like you see them going down the wrong path so like depending on their background at home or their friend circle Mm. they they will make the wrong choices and there's nothing like as a teacher there's nothing I can do about that they have to make the choices themselves and it it honestly is like I it's so frustrating for me like when you you see the potential in a pupil and you know what they could achieve and they just they don't they it's 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 awful it you is. know what that, that, a lot of people who are watching who are parents can can also probably that can that resonates with a lot of parents as well because mm-hmm. 
Because with parenting, even where you can potentially see where you you think your child should go, as they kind of get older, <laughs> and I guess we'll find out as our kids get older, kids, you know, they have their own minds, I guess. They want yeah. to do their own things. So yeah. it's, a, it's a really tricky one. I guess for you as a teacher, it's even it's even more compounded because you have so many more pupils, so you children yeah. you're looking after. Yeah. And there's just... And then you're seeing them every year as well because yeah. one set go and then another set come as well. Yeah. And even from year to year, like when they first come in, when they're first years, they're all like, they're so enthusiastic and motivated. And then as they get older and the hormones kick in and the friendships build, mm. you can, some of, I mean, it's not the same, it's definitely not across the board, but mm-hmm. you see some of them, they could have achieved so much and you just see them going down the wrong path and you can't do anything because it's them making their own choices. Yeah. Wow. What would you say you love about teaching? Um, I love, I love the face-to-face interaction. Um, okay. Like seeing, I see, I think our classes are about 30. So up to 30 pupils in a class and it's just the face-to-face interaction with them. Um, so I actually, d- during the lockdowns that we've had, I really didn't enjoy it because you mm. weren't getting that face-to-face interaction. You were just yeah. speaking to them over a like over a keyboard. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, definitely the face-to-face interactions. They like the kids will make you feel every single emotion there is to feel. <laughs> um, <laughs> they will, they'll make you laugh and they'll make you cry and they'll make you cry with laughter as well. And mm. they'll always surprise you as well. Like mm. you can never, I don't know predict everything that's going to happen or everything that they're going to say like sometimes somebody will just come out with something and I'm like wow like I was not expecting that so how much income per month or per annum do you currently make as a maths teacher okay so in Scotland um, and I think it's it's similar in England there's a pay scale I think there's five or six um, different levels so when you first start as a probationer you're on 27,000 um, and you do one year probation and then you work your way up to 41,000 so that is the top of just a, a normal classroom teacher without any promotions or anything so when you're at the top you're on 41,000 I'm not at the top yet I am on I think 36,000 okay. and then um, I'm, well I'm currently on maternity leave but if I was in work Come August, that would be, go- be going up to 39,000. And then the following August, that would be me at the top. So on the 41,000. Um, in England, it's slightly different. I think the top is 36. And then you have to apply and your employer has to allow you to move up the next set of skills. So I think they're, the very top in England is also 41, but you have to apply to your employer and they have to allow you to go onto that pay scale or yeah. something. So we hear a lot about teaching and pay. So Mary and I have friends who, um, in fact, you're your really good friend. Mary's really, really good friend, um, who she's known from childhood, um, went to train as a teacher and, yeah. and ended up, um, I guess, better way to say it is quitting the profession, as it were, to yeah. do something else. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's not the only one we know. We know many other people, actually, who mm-hmm. have said, you know what, they can't hack it as teachers, mm-hmm. either because, like, the behaviour thing with children or, um, I don't know, class sizes or lack of, or the hours they're working, working crazy, crazy hours, um, just doesn't, it doesn't match with the level of income that they feel that they're, that they're getting. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you, do you feel that, I mean, and it might sound like an obvious question, but it would just be good to get your perspective. Do you feel that the income you're getting matches the level of work you put in? And if not, what might be the sort of income you might, you might aspirationally want to be earning for the level of work you put in? Um, that's a tough one. I know there's definitely... <laughs> There's definitely two sides um, to this. I know a lot of people think teaching is a, I'm trying to think of the word, kushti. I think that's a Scottish word. It's a, like a, a good profession to be in because you get the holidays, you get an all right pay. Um, they think it's not that hard because you're only doing 35 hours a week, but yeah. it is really hard. And I don't want to sound really negative, but mm-hmm. it is tough. It is a really tough job for whatever yeah. reasons. Like, depending on your school, depending on the area of the country, depending on you as an individual, you will face 
different challenges and you will find it really, really tough. Um, I personally don't think teachers do get paid enough, um, mm-hmm. but I mean, I am still doing the job, so <laughs> I must be I must be happy with it in, somewhere inside. I think it's the Scandinavian countries. Mm-hmm. I think teachers are seen as at the same level as doctors. Wow. Um, so I think their pay is much, much better in the Scandinavian countries, whereas I know in America, so I don't know if it's across uh, all of America, but some places in America, teachers are working two jobs because mm-hmm. their teaching pay doesn't cover um, their living expenses. Mm-hmm. So I think in the UK, I think we're sort of medium, like yeah. we're average compared to globally. But I do think, I don't think we're valued enough. Like none of us would be here mm-hmm. without the teachers that taught us in school. Yeah, so course. it's like, it's yeah. such a, it's such a privilege to be in that position. Mm-hmm. You're, you're like shaping people's minds and you're inspiring people to go on to do whatever they're going to do in their future when they grow up. I was thinking to myself, this skill of teaching Mm -hmm. by itself is such a transferable skill. Like, for example, everything we do on this channel on YouTube is what you do as a teacher. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, we're we're essentially offering financial education and then we are communicating and trying to help people understand. In fact, I look at people like you and I try to work out how it is you're able to communicate, you know, in the simplest form such that, you know, you're almost speaking in almost in, in layman's terms so that, you know, mm-hmm. people can understand what you're teaching. So I see those skills as almost invaluable skills to have. So I do wonder then why it is that I don't see a lot of teachers perhaps exploring other ways of generating an income, you know, uh, perhaps being somewhat entrepreneurial with, maybe some of the extra time they get during the summer. Do you have anything to say to that? I'm just very curious about this. Is it that they're just overworked and don't have a lot of time to think about other ideas? Or is it that they don't, a lot of teachers don't know that they could use their skills in different ways? Or perhaps it's just frowned upon. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What what do you think? I think it's probably during term time, um, they are overworked. I mean, you don't have time to do anything else really I haven't been as proactive as I should be during the holidays I I could look into stuff like that but I end up doing other things like I end up like doing DIY or decorating around the house yeah. and things like that just sort of catching up on things that I don't have time to do during mm-hmm. term time mm-hmm. um yeah I know a lot of teachers depending on your subject area I know a lot of teachers do tutoring um on the side um in the evenings and stuff but mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Do you plan on increasing your current level of income? And if so, through what sources? Okay, so yes, yes and no. Um, In my career as a maths teacher, I don't really plan on increasing my income in that way because the higher up in management you go in a school, the less contact time you have with classes. So it becomes less about teaching the pupils and more about managing the staff. And at the moment, I don't really want to do that because um, mm-hmm. I enjoy the face-to-face with the pupils. Um, mm-hmm. And also, I'm currently on maternity leave, so when I go back, I'm actually planning to go down to four days a week so that right. I can spend more time at home. Mm-hmm. So career-wise, I'm not planning on um, upping my income in any way. I do, and I have in the past, done tutoring. So pre-COVID, I did used to tutor quite a bit in the evenings um, just as a sort of side hustle. Mm-hmm. And But now that I've got a a little one and looking into more passive income streams so I have like now that I'm off on maternity leave and I have all this extra time Mm. I've set up a YouTube channel and although like the YouTube channel itself isn't monetized yet I'm Mm. looking into affiliate marketing and um, what are they called downloadable PDFs Mm -hmm. Um, I've got them on Etsy as well so I'm looking more into passive income because I'm wanting although I want to increase my income Mm -hmm. I do want to spend more time at home now that we have a little one Yeah, I was going to add, by the way, our observation of a lot of the people who make money online, a lot of them are women, a lot of them who are affiliate marketers, who create principles and and stuff like that, and make quite a lot of money on platforms like Etsy, are women. Uh, And lots of them are really, uh, have really explored those sources of income out of perhaps starting a family and wanting to be more present and stuff like that. And the need to just be flexible and be able to work in your own house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so there's, there's huge scope. We're going to put a link to your YouTube channel. We're going to put it up on the screen. So guys, make sure you head over there, check out Lexi, support her, you know, do subscribe to the channel. 
and show some love. Show some love, guys. So, Lexi, what top three pieces of, of advice would you give somebody who is looking at you right now and saying, do you know what, I wouldn't mind becoming a maths teacher what, one day? What would you say to that person? Um, okay, I've already touched on this, but I would say it is hard work. Um, it is really tough, uh, especially in the beginning when you're just finding your feet. It does get easier, although it is, it is still a hard job, but it is really tough in the beginning. Do it for the rewards. Don't do it for the money. So if you're looking at it as just an easy job to make a, a decent living, you're you're going to hate it. <laughs> um, you definitely need to do it because you want to do it and you have a passion to do it. Mm. Um, definitely don't just do it because you you see the salary and think you you want that. Third thing is when you're beginning as a teacher, you you want to do things your way and you want to make your own lessons up from scratch and you will spend hours and hours and hours doing this. Don't do that. <laughs> there are tons and tons of resources already out there available, made by other teachers across the world, across like the country. Um, make use of them <laughs> because you will just work yourself into the ground trying to make, like trying to reinvent the wheel. Love it. So how would you currently describe your relationship with money? So <laughs> I, I used to think I was good with money and then I started watching your channel <laughs> and realised I'm not good with money. Um, I've always, like I've always saved. Um, I've always sort of paid my own way. But as for investing, I don't really know much about it. As for early retirement, I was, I've was i just been sort of happy with my pension that automatically happens through my work. Um, okay. I didn't really know anything about all these things that you talk about on your channel. So yeah. I'm probably not very good with money. Um, <laughs> my, like my savings just sort of sit in the bank account collecting dust. Um, so you are so. saving money though, which, which <laughs> shows us that you do have somewhat of a, a good relationship with money because where you tend to find that people have a bad relationship with money is where their actions indicate it is, is far removed from almost the result of what they're doing with their money it's very different to what they might be preaching or what they might be uh, you know day to day might be almost communicating so for us, it sounds to it sounds to us that you are managing to actually live below your means, which is oh, yeah. one yeah. of the biggest, one of the almost the most fundamental thing that one has to do with their with their money. Really, is, is find a way to live below their means. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely live below my means, and I'm always, I'm always looking for a deal and a bargain. Like um, we bought a house, I think two years ago, and okay. instead of getting somebody in to do up the kitchen, we did it ourselves and. Like wow. as a result of that, I now know how to tile walls and stuff wow. like yeah. stuff stuff yeah. I I didn't know how to do. But because we wanted to keep the costs low, uh -huh. we just sort of watched YouTube videos and learned how to do it ourselves. And um, the same with like moving into the house, we didn't buy new furniture. We bought like secondhand furniture and like upcycled it. Nice. So I'm definitely very practical. I'm definitely into like saving money. I yeah. save it and then I don't really do anything with it. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so okay, watch more of our I'm watch more of our investing investing videos for sure. <laughs> I know uh, because you don't want that money just sitting there doing nothing. You definitely want it working for you. Yeah. What What would you say you learned from your parents growing up about money? I learned budgeting um, because my mum is a single parent. She uh, budget had to budget her money um, in order to survive, sort of thing. I learned to save. Um, I learned to work for my money so if I wanted something when I was growing up my mum wouldn't just like go out and buy me it she was basically like you need to go and get a job <laughs> if you want that you need to get a job so you can buy it for yourself and um, so I learned that I needed to work for money um, I think not through her teaching me this but through observation and sort of just living with her I learned that I, I didn't want to borrow money off of people so my mum as a single parent she worked more than one job. She always had two jobs, um, oh. at least. I mean, she provided everything we needed. She, I mean, she bought a house, she had a car. We had everything we needed, but she was always worried about money. So me, like, seeing that and growing up with that, that's made me know that I don't want to be in that position. So I have always made sure that I have enough money for myself and I have, like, uh, my emergency fund so that I never need to borrow money because my mum, she... She still does, and she used to borrow money from her parents. Mm. But but because I knew she didn't have money, 
I never like wanted to borrow from her because I knew she didn't have money. And I think like I don't resent her. It's not a, it's not a pity party by any means. Mm. I'm thankful that I grew up in that um, environment because it's made me independent and it's it's made me well. I thought I was good with money, <laughs> but it's yeah, um, yeah it, it's made me independent and not have to rely on people for money. Yeah. Do you know one thing you said there really hit hit home for me at that point about not wanting to borrow from your parents. Mm-hmm. Like I remember growing up and I used, I used to say to myself, like, you know, I really want to stand, stand on my own two feet. I, you know, I never wanted to go to my parents and say, oh, you know, here we go again. And I need a, a thousand pounds or I need a bit of money here and there. I really was so, this is one of my core things, mm-hmm. was really not wanting to t- met, turn that into a thing. Mm-hmm. I wanted to just yeah. demonstrate to my parents that, uh, do you know what, I can... Like I'm finding my way and I'm making my own way. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting when they observe me and they've observed over the years, you know, they say things like, you know, you never come to us to complain about stuff. You never like, which I think is just uh, for them is good, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, they're able to kind of say, well, actually our child is kind of doing his own thing. And, um, and that just gives them peace of mind and gives yeah. me peace of mind knowing that I, I've been able to stand on my own two feet yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree. I think because I saw the struggles that she had with money, I didn't want to be like an extra burden for her, like putting more stress on her because she was always already working so hard to provide for us. So yeah, I just, it doesn't, it, it's never sat right with me, the idea of having to ask my mum for money. If I want something, I need to go out and make my money so that I can buy it if I want it. Talking of buying things, what do you currently spend most of your money on per month? And what do you spend on to treat yourself? Because let's be honest, we all know it's very, it can be very stressful being a maths teacher. And, you know, just how do you look after your mental health? Okay. Um, I think I think it depends on the season of life that I'm in. So um, when I was really into scuba diving, I spent like all my money on scuba gear and stuff like that. Um, when I started making... Like my when I became a maths teacher um, and started having the monthly income, I I think I used to get my nails done and I used to get my eyebrows done and I used to pamper myself. And then we started looking to save up for a house. So I sort of stopped all that and everything was geared towards getting on the property ladder. And once we were on the property ladder, it was all about um like filling our house with furniture and doing decorations and DIY and stuff like that. And in the past year, it's been mostly about starting a family. So okay. I've got a, he's three months old now, a little one. Oh. And so up until like he was born, I was concentrating on saving all my money. Um, so I could take a longer maternity leave because oh. um, your pay drops after three months, I think. Right. So, yeah, for the past year, it's been focused solely on saving money for starting a family. Um, So, yeah, I don't really, at the moment, I don't really spend money on myself, really. (laughs) Let's cast our gaze back a few years and think about maybe, um, I don't know how old you are, but maybe when you were in your 20s or whatever, um, assuming that you're not in your 20s anymore. um, Can you think of a specific money mistake or regret uh, that you have and what did you learn from it? Okay, yeah, so I have two. Um, The first one, so like I said, previously in Scotland we don't have to pay for education Mm. um once you leave school so I didn't have to take a a student loan to pay for my university and I also didn't move away from home so I I still lived at home uh, with my mum while I was at university Mm -hmm. and then for some reason in my fourth year I decided to take out a student loan to fund a holiday (laughs) um so like I was totally debt free up until that point and I was like oh you know what I'm going to take out a loan and I'm going to go to America for five weeks <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah although I like I loved the experience it was an amazing trip um I am now in debt and paying off a student loan <laughs> wow. so yeah that's one of my regrets and my second one is it's to do with the whole as your wage goes up your like cost of living that's goes up, up. Yeah. yeah 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 so I previously had I'd bought my car outright I bought like a secondhand Renault Megane and I owned that car I didn't have any car payments and then as like once we bought our house and I had this this job that had a regular income I was like you know what I need a new car (laughs) I need a big car (laughs) 
um I didn't need a big car it was just the two of us and like at that point we didn't even have a dog so it was just the two of us and I was like you know what no I need a big car so now I have a 220 pound month payment on a car when I didn't need a new car (laughs) like I had a Renault Lagan and that would have fit a dog in it and it would have fit a a child in it like Mm. I like that I that really irritates me now (laughs) might 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 that have been influenced by maybe seeing a friend who bought a new car like my car that I had it was due its MOT and I knew it needed work done Mm. um and you know what I could like I had the money to pay for the work that was needing done um like I said I've got my emergency fund so I had the money there but yeah I just I was like, new house, new job, new car. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I was, sort of, I was thinking sort of like in the future, we will have a dog, we will have a family, I need a bigger car. But I, I didn't, like we would we would have all fit in the rain on the gun. Yeah. <laughs> so what would you say is your ultimate financial goal? Oh, yeah, I've been thinking about this. I, I've got so many like dreams and they just seem so out of reach at the moment so Come like, on, I'd let's love hear to... it I'm, I'm excited <laughs> to hear your dreams go on let's hear it well I'd love to I don't know I'd love to retire early I'd love to pay off our mortgage early I would love to like we'd love to put an extension on our house and um, we'd love to renovate our house because like it's not a fixer-upper but it, it does need some work done um I would we like my, me and my partner we'd love to sort of go on to the like we're already on the property ladder but like become landlords or okay. flip property because like I'm really into like the whole DIY thing so I'd love to like yeah. flip properties um so I'd, I'd really love to like travel like be able to take my family traveling with me <laughs> ah like so many things but ultimately like the, the most important thing for me is I don't want to have to worry about money and I feel like I feel so silly saying this because I was watching like one of your other ones where you were interviewing like somebody who's on like 500,000 and he was like oh 10 million dollars and I was like "Mm." (laughs) (laughs) so yeah um it's probably it's a very small goal but yeah yeah it's it's important to me yeah yeah it's not I should say by the way it's not a small goal it's it's actually it's actually a, a a completely valid goal you know I think most people want financial security. They mm-hmm. want not to worry about money. Yeah. This is a big, it was a big thing for us. We wanted to not, when we think about money, we didn't want to think stress. It's actually where the term that we came up with financial joy comes from. We wanted to mm-hmm. feel a level of joy when we think about money and what that money represents in our lives, yeah. uh, rather than kind of feeling fear or stressed or worry, you know, all these kind of things that people typically feel when they think about money. So I wouldn't call it a small goal no, at all. No, not at all. Not yeah. At all. We love it. But one thing I would add, though, is it sounded to me like you've got a wish list of things you want yeah. to do. question yeah. then becomes, how do you, which of those are you going to prioritise, you know, i.e. as always see it as the North Star goal you're aiming mm-hmm. for. So actually, that's the goal we're going for above everything else. Yeah. And then in addition to that goal, we're now going to layer on top of it an actual plan for how we're going to get there. So if I had to add anything to that, that would be what that would be what I would say um, might be the next the next step when it comes to actually potentially even making that go into reality. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it does. It seems like all my like dreams they seem so like out of reach, but mm-hmm. um, anything's possible. <laughs> yeah, I, do you know what I, I I can say I can I can actually speak to that in that mm-hmm. like. A lot of our goals seem so so far out there, you know. Mary and I, when we think back to when we were trying to pay off our mortgage, it just seemed impossible. Mm-hmm. Like, see, like, not even going to joke, lie about that. It just seemed like, how is that even going to happen? But you, you'd be amazed by how you start to shift certain things away from your life, and because you're so focused on trying to ach- achieve one specific thing, um, and that priority you have in your life then dictates where your money goes and where your time goes more specifically in order to try and achieve that goal. So Exactly. Like yeah. if you can plan it out and start from the end, work your way backwards, it actually you can see how it can realistically be achievable because mm-hmm. you have a plan in place. So, yeah, we're super excited for you. And, yeah, fair, thank you so much for this interview. We've really you know taken away a lot from this and i'm sure a lot of people would yeah. find a lot of value from this interview mm-hmm. so guys definitely check out lexi's channel as yeah. well like ken said we'll put it in the description below mm-hmm. show her some support show her some love yep. 
and thank you for watching guys yeah and we want to just draw your attention to other videos in a series we've interviewed uh, surgeons investment bankers accountants youtubers uh, pro gamers, who else we interviewed? Music producers, did you say that? Yeah, music producers, engineers, you know, and obviously now we've interviewed a teacher. So definitely check out all those interviews. They all say so much, so much wisdom within those interviews for yes. just helping us win in life and win on this journey towards building our dream lives. Thanks again for watching. Thank you again, Lexi. Really Thank appreciate you. you. Thank you. Thanks. It's been amazing having you on. And guys, don't forget to hit the like button as well if you really enjoyed today's video. That's right, guys. And as ever, in all things, be thankful and, and seek joy. joy. Take care. Take care. Bye.